bright Sabbath morning. It's looking lovely on the outside. And I'm sure if we sitting inside, we're looking just as beautiful. I can't see those online, but I'm assuming the Spirit of God tell me that they, they also are looking beautiful. So we just want to give God thanks for the week that is being completed. It is a week that I can tell you I have been blessed. And so with that, I am going to share the sentiments that we all have been blessed regardless of what challenges might have come our way. God has been good, and as a result of that, we are here this morning, bright and early, to say thank you, Jesus, to God be the glory. Amen? Yes, this, um, based on our lesson study that we are studying this quarter, I want to be continuing looking at, um, at, at the theme, recognizing God's love. And God has been truly good to us. And we need to recognize and understand the love of God while we are here today worshiping him. So at this time, I just want to encourage us as I welcome you to keep steadfast, keep your eyes on Jesus as we stand and we're going to sing, I will sing of Jesus' love, sing of him who first loved me, for he left bright worlds above and died on Calvary. We stand.
loving Father who dwells in the most high heaven, glory and honor be ascribed to your name, for you are worthy. Lord, we thank you for your mercy, your grace, and for your love. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Sabbath, the blessing of health, and even the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of family, the gift of friendship, and we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity given to us to be found in this place to worship thee. We pray that, Lord, may you accept our praises and worship, and Lord, may you help us to be in one accord even as we praise thee. We commit this day to you, and we commit all that has been lined up in this day, that may all be done to the glory of your name. For this we pray and ask in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. One of my sister share with, shared with me this week this little message, and I, it, I felt so good, and so I am going to share it with you. It says, during every hour of Christ's sojourn upon the earth, the love of God was following from him, was flowing from him in impermissible streams. All who are imbued with the Holy Spirit will love as he loved. The very principle that actuated Christ will actuate them in all their dealing one with another. The love is the evidence of their discipleship. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, said Jesus. If ye have love one to another, when men are bound together, not by force or self-interest, but by love, they show the working of an influence that is above every human influence. Where there is oneness, where oneness is, is exists, it is evident that the image of God is being restored in humanity. That a new principle of life has been implanted. It shows that there is power in the divine nature of, to withstand the supernatural agencies of evil, and that the grace of God subdues the selfishness inherited in the natural heart. And you know, when, she, when I read when I got it, I was like, oh my God. That she know I'm just I'm just so this from the whole month of April start all that is coming about me is the love of God, regardless of how you, some of you might know I might be feeling down. I am still able to recognize the love of God, and so I just think it's just the spirit of God working amongst us that you know what we need when He will actually send it to us. So I just want to use that to encourage you, us, each and every one of us here, to know. And it, was, it is taken from Lift Him Up, page 298. All right? So we're going to continue with our Sabbath school program. And at this time, we are going to have the mission story, which will be done by Sister Telma. After Sister Thelma, we're going to have the scripture reading by Sister Denise. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Oh, mm. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Oh, that is bright and beautiful, oh, yeah. sunny and nice. And we are inside here. What happened? We're not feeling that sunshine. There is sunshine in my soul today. What happened? Come on. 
Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, sister. Okay, that's better. This morning, our mission story is entitled, One Broken String. One Broken String. Atta got baptized in New Bakistan when he was five. But he didn't know anything about God. No one spoke to him about God or took him back to church after his baptism. Even though he never thought about God, he began wearing a cross-shaped earring when he was 14. He thought it looked cool then Arthur told his mother that he wanted to learn to play the guitar. Mother took him straight to a music store. Arthur's life was aimless, and she thought that a guitar might give him some purpose. Arthur picked out a brown electrical guitar. At home, he found guitar lessons on YouTube and started trying to play. He was, it wasn't easy. Pressing down and the strings hurt his fingers. But after a few days, the pain began to subside. His music, however, didn't sound anything like that of the YouTube teacher. Two weeks after buying the guitar, a string snapped it. Arthur didn't know how to change the string, so he took he looked for help online. He found the phone number of someone named Atom, who offered guitar, guitar lessons. He called. I need a I need it. I need it. <laughs> Sorry. I need a, 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 no. The word is just there. I need to change, a git, I need to change a string. He said, can you help? Atom give, Atom give Arthur his home address. The address sounded familiar. Arthur wondered where he had heard it. Then he remembered his mother used to work with a man named Parcel at that address. The two has built furniture together. Parcel has died. Are you by any chance Parcel's son, he asked. Yes, I am, Atom said. The next day, Atta replaced the guitar string. Afterward, he asked, at, he asked Arthur if he knew how to play. Atta tried to show what he had learned on YouTube, but Atom stopped him. Stop, stop, said, you are playing the chords backward. Suddenly, Atta and understood why, why his music didn't sound at all like that of the teacher on YouTube. He hadn't been playing correctly. Atta invited Arthur to guitar lessons. At the first lesson, Atta commented on the cross ship airing in, Atta, in Atta's ears. Are you a Christian? He asked. Atta said he wasn't a Christian at the second lesson. He wasn't a Christian. At the second lesson, Atta suggested meeting the next time in a room at the local Seventh-day Adventist church. 
the church was cool to uh, to Atom. The church was close to Atom home, and he agreed. As Atom learned to play the guitar, he began to spend time with Atom outside of outside of lessons. He learned that Atom was a global missionary, a mission pioneer, a missionary who shares the gospel with people in his own culture. He accepted the invitations to go hiking with Atom and other Adventists in the mountain. When the hiker sit to rest, Otto, Otto enjoyed listening to them sing songs. Atom played along and the guitar. That summer, Otto went to an Adventist youth retreat in another city. He was caught off guard when a retreat speaker asked the attendee to split into peers to pray. I am an atheist, he told the first person who offered to pray with him. The person went away. Atom also told the next person who came over that he didn't believe in God. Moreover, he added, I've never prayed before. This person did not go away. We can fix that. He said, he taught Otto to pray. That night, Otto taught, uh, that night, Otto taught for a long time about what has taken place. And Sabbath, he was amazed to see a young man got baptized at the retreat. I was baptized when I was five, he said. Why do Adventists baptize adults? He learned that Adventists understand the Bible to teach that people should be old enough to understand the Bible and the, com and, and the commitment that they are making to God before being baptized. The next Sabbath, Otto went to the Adventist church near his home to worship for the first time. In the afternoon, he joined church members in handling out school supplies to needed children. He felt new joy, felt his heart. He had thought, what is the point of living if I do not help others? It was a turning point in his life. He no longer wanted to live an aimless existence, but he resolved to help others and to know God. Eight months have passed since Arthur started attending church regularly. He have, be, he have been studying the Bible and he wanted and he wants to give his life to Jesus, sorry, in baptism. He is glad that his guitar string broke. I believe in God because of a broken guitar string, he said. reading is taken from Isaiah 31 verses 9 to 13 and I'll be reading the New King James Version. You whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest regions and said to you you are my servant I have chosen you and have not cast you away. Fear not 
for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing, and those who strive with you shall perish. You shall seek them and not find them, those who contended with you. Those who war against you shall be as nothing, as a non-existent thing. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Amen. Thanks, Sister Thelma and Sister Denise, for doing the mission story and the scripture reading. So since April, we have started the lesson study on the great controversy. And last week, we studied the war behind all wars. And this week, we're going to continue, and we're going to be study. We have studied this week, which we'll, we will review today, the central issue, love or self, selfishness. And so at this time, our dear first elder, Elder Kufa, will come and take charge of the lesson review. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, how's it been the week? Good? Right. Um, right. Um, a challenge this morning. Other than the, the sister who is visiting us today, is there anyone in this group who knows everyone's name in this room? Those who are here. Look around. And you tell me if you know everyone other than the sister sitting next to brother. I'm not going to mention his name. So you don't know everyone. <laughs> you have to be I can't remember her name. <laughs> she's not a visit. She's not a visit anymore. Ah. Well, she can't speak. She's so <laughs> okay. Well, the simple, the simple fact is that none of us here knows everyone in here. Now, but my memory is poor sometimes. And uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to, to confess here. I know almost everyone here. I, actually, I know everyone, but my mom is gone, and it's actually the sister matter for them. The sister's name is gone. Um, the sister is sitting next to Brother Peter's sister-in-law. I know that's Brother Sister, Brother Peter's sister-in-law also. So I got it already. I know that's your sister-in-law. Um, but the name I don't know. But the, the sister's name is gone. Now, here's what we're going to do. So that we, we, we review our names and we memor I mean, we sort of bring to memory our names again. I'll start by, you tell me how your week was. You mention your name. Tell us how your week was. Just in two sentences or one sentence. Your name and how your week was. They can't see you, my sister, this side. Um, and the mic. My name's Charlene Holness. Um, my week was very busy, but I'm not 100, but I'm here, and I'm thankful. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Arthur. Uh, my week was okay. Um, I'm happy to be here today. Morning. My name is Moses. Uh, my week was great. Yeah. Amen. The week was great. We, we want to hear about it. Morning. My name is Yusuf. Uh, my week was 
Okay, yeah, settling back. Welcome back. Good morning. My name is Veronica Wilson Hart. Um, I must say, last week I prayed and I prayed and asked the Lord that um, I want a job this week. I said, enough is enough. I want a job this week. We prayed and um, it's looking good. I won't say anything else. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Leslie Lawrence. You, did you say Leslie? Leslie Lawrence. So, you see, I've learned something <laughs> new now. I didn't know you, you were called Leslie. So, I always knew Brother uh, Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and I'm grateful. For Amen. Amen. My name is Foyen, and um, I had a good week, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Morning, all. My name is Jean, and I had a relaxing week this week. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Clifford. I am, I'm settling in. Okay, welcome back. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my name is Fenista, and my week was okay. I think. Morning. My name is Janet, and. Uh, I had a good week, and um, this is Joe Rapper, and he had a good week also. Thank you. My name is Denise. Uh, I had a good week. I had a peaceful week. I had a few jobs and errands to run, and everything went to plan, so I'm grateful. Uh, my name is Ndanila, and my week was okay. Uh, good morning. My name is George. I am a son of the soil. I was born in the Caribbean. I grew in England. I lived in Finland. I come back home. Amen. Welcome back home. My name is Thelma. I have a wonderful week. Thank you. And my name is Peter. By God's grace, I'm still here. My name is Ansela, and I had an okay week. It was okay. My name is Yonet, and I had a blessed week. My name is Carly. Thank God for another week. My name is Okwara. Um, uh, my week has been difficult. I have a challenge back home in Nigeria. My kids here are all sick, but to go be the glory, he's in control. Amen. Yeah. My name is Marcia. Uh, my week was, bl I've, I've had a blessed week. Um, good morning, my name's Joan. Um, I had a, a good week, um, and it was a joy to speak to my brother um, who had had a stroke, and I wasn't sure how his recovery was going, but um, it was nice to be able to speak to him, and so his voice hasn't gone. William, sir? Yes, sir. Did you? Oh, oh, yeah, but they did. So, um, those of you who don't know me, Kuf, um, Chikun is my first name. Kufa is my second name. Uh, my week was fine. Um, fine. Just good at the, the Lord. My goodness. Um, let us pray before we go into our lesson study. Let us pray. I'll pray to God above. In heaven, Lord, we want to thank you for all these wonderful people that are around. We want to thank you for your goodness. We want to thank you for your love. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, dear God. You left the glory of heaven to come and die for us on the cross. We come this morning, we ask that you confess all our sins, wash us in your blood. As we study your word, dear God, we pray that you're going to guide us through the rest of the class. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, here it is. She's um, um, Marcia, our Sabbath school leader, um, sort of put an introduction to our lesson study. Uh, I must say, I want to thank you, Brother Arthur, for introducing us to a great controversy uh, subject uh, this quarter. Um, you did a commendable job, so we, we thank you for introducing us to, to the topic of uh, the great controversy. 
Now, um, you, you notice that um, as we study the word of God, we don't just study for studying sake. We study because we want to apply this word in our lives. So when we, le- we read God's word, we look at how is it applicable in our lives. If it doesn't make any sense or it's not applicable in our lives today, then there's no sense in us studying the word of God. Is that okay? Just like we, we go to, to, to school, we go to universities, we go to work, and the knowledge we acquire, we apply it. So we, we, we are told that which you learn, and if you don't apply it, what happens? You lose it. So if we, we come here and we study the word of God, and then we don't apply it in our lives, then obviously it's meaningless. We lose it. So therefore, um, as we study today, we are going to see that uh, there are those who applied the word of God as it came to them. And those who rejected it, there are also consequences that follow. Yes? Um, so last week, the lesson considered the origin of sin. Sin started mysteriously in heaven with Lucifer when he coveted the throne of God, marking the beginning of the great controversy that is raging on even today. This week, we consider the central issue in the great controversy, love or selfishness. We use the context of living in the persecution and suffering amid the destructive conditions. Now, as we, as we look at um, the issue of the central issue, love or selfishness. Now, I love it the way the, 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 the writer has put it, because it's chosen two words, love and selfishness. And the two don't go together. They run parallel. They will never meet. Yeah? So um, when you look at um, as us as human beings, we are found in those two groups. It says that you're found in a group of those who are loving or those who are selfish. Um, I, I was thinking about it after Brother Arthur taught a lesson. Um, and thank you for the slides, by the way. Uh, I went through the slides. And then I looked at... Um, the issue of the great controversy uh, in the theme of uh, the way Lucifer started it. Uh, we are told the heaven was perfect and it, everything God created was, was holy and perfect. And yet, sin was found in Lucifer. Now, you notice that um, there's nothing wrong in aspiring to be something or to be someone in life. We, we all came here, I want to believe those of us um, um, who are not indigenous to look for maybe better life, if we are to call it that way. In so doing, it means we, we are aspiring to be somewhere better. Yes? True or not? So we, we, we left where we came from, wherever we came from, aspiring to be, to better ourselves. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. But what is wrong is to use the method Lucifer used. So, there's a danger there that some of us, me included, that we may find ourselves aspiring to be something or to be someone using wrong shortcuts, wrong methods. What am I saying here? As human beings, we tend to be ambitious, all of us. But in being ambitious, sometimes we we use wrong methods of getting to where we want to get. Uh, Instead of waiting for God to... Um, to, 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 to sort of um, put us there. Um, so the lesson study today, the issue of selfishness and love. So as much as we do ministry, we do it out of love. And then when we ascend to higher heights, it's because God has allowed us and has put us there. Not out of selfish motives. Now, I'm, 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 I'm sort of concentrating on the two words, selfishness and love there. So you notice that when you are selfish, you don't care what happens around you. You don't care who you trample on. So if you are underground and they shout fire, fire, underground, um, because you are scared and you only think about your life, you don't care about who you are going to step on. In the event, you may actually step on someone's throat because they're falling down and kill them. Because why? You're just worried about your life. Um, but in a way, we are told if you don't, you're not selfish and you've got love, you've got this loving character, you're going to look around to see who needs the help before you find yourself outside of the, 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 the tunnel. Now, how many of us 
because I've seen so many um, scenarios or videos or um, certain um, scenes given where someone sacrifices to go back in a burning building to rescue people or to go in the water and in the event they die themselves and they rescue someone. So how many of us would be willing to sacrifice, say, no, I'm not going to think about myself, I'm not going to be selfish here, I want to save the soul first before I save myself. There are very few of us. I'm not going, I don't want you to put your hands up. We know ourselves. So the issue of love and selfishness is a critical issue which plays in our lives today. We may deny it, but all of us, we find ourselves in one category. Either we are selfish or we are loving. So our text, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen, the, I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now, there are 10 points I want us to look at before we start making contributions. Because I, I, I know that you've read the lesson study, so I'll take it for granted that all of you understand the lesson study today. The central issue, love or selfishness. The text, before I, I say the 10 points, I, I, I want a few of us to comment on the text. What did we gather? Because um, Sister, Sister Denise read the text very well. Um, and thank you, Sister Denise, for that. Um, so you notice that um, that text is a text full of hope. Text full of um, uh, sort of giving us courage to remain faithful, not to be fearful, but to be hopeful. So those of us who, who read through the lesson study, and uh, I'll say those of us who read the lesson study, what do we get, what do we get or do we gather from that text? Isaiah chapter 41, verse 12. What, 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 so so what, what I'm trying to get at is, instead of us sitting here digesting the lesson study, at the end of the, the lesson study, I want, maybe you've done that already during the week, but I want us to go to something from, uh, from here. Take something that you, you, you are, we can make practical in our lives. Instead of, instead of just theorizing it, because normally we would come here and theorize things, but we don't practice what it is. Now, I've discovered this week, actually, I've, re I've read this text and I've read most of the, actually all the texts that are written there, but um, I think it's hit me that uh, I'm not being a genuinely practical Christian in some areas. I'm, I'm confessing your, your presence. So I've found that myself wanting in a sense that the things that the, the children of Israel or the Jews of then that time, those Israel who perished, they perished because of what? Because they chose not to follow the instructions. Because the instructions were clear, they were given. And we find ourselves in a same, similar situation now. We can talk about selfishness, talk about love, but when we come out of here, are we going to be practical about how we do these things? Because so many times um, I've come in this church and I've heard people preach about love, preach about not being selfish, and tomorrow people talk about love, talk about selfishness, next year we come to be the same subject. So the, the issue is, are we ever going to change? Now, I shouldn't say, are we ever going to change? Am I ever going to change? So, what did we take from the, the text? Anyone wants to just say a few words from the text? Yes, yes. Um, the one word for me in that text is promise. Mm -hmm. It's full of promise. It's full of assurance mm -hmm. is a sort of text that we should um, always have at the back of our mind mm -hmm. so that when you confront difficult circumstances, when you confront circumstances that seem to overwhelm you, this assures you that you are in the right place and there's someone who is watching out for you. But because we are humans, it's always very difficult. It's always very difficult being humans to, to rest on this hope, this hopeful promise. So because we don't rest on this hopeful promise, we are always afraid. And because we are always afraid, we seek alternative um, alternative ways of resolving the problems that are that are surrounding us. I have just said that when you were 
when we were introducing ourselves. I've just said that, yes, I have a challenge back home. My kids are sick at home too. But this is a text that says, fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. He, he is going to strengthen you in such circumstances that you feel you've been overwhelmed, in such circumstances that you feel no man can do anything. There is a God who is holding your hands in such circumstances. Thank you. Thank you. I see Sir Janet is hand at the back. Thank you ever for that. Sir Janet at the back. Now, you, you, you notice um, there's a saying that says, uh, when the two elephants fight, who suffers? The ground or the grass suffers. Mm. Now, in this case, the great controversy, I don't know what has been your controversy this week. Forget about the past, the other one, but I just want to consider on this past week. The few days gone from last Sabbath, what has been your great controversy? What controversy have you been involved in? What issues have you been involved in? Now, the, the difference is, when the two elephants fight, they are not thinking about the grass, so the grass will die. But in this fight, the great controversy we are in, there's someone who is concerned about our welfare. So the devil may not care. He's very selfish. On the other hand, Jesus Christ, I'm summarizing now. On the other hand, Jesus Christ is so loving and caring that he doesn't want to trample on us. He doesn't want to see us die. And if we die, it's a choice we would have made ourselves. Uh, Sister Janet. Um, I think applying this, this text to my life, um, as this brother Corey said, it's a promise to me that I can trust God um, mm -hmm. regardless of what is happening. I can trust him. And if I believe or as if we believe that God is not a man that he could lie or that he would lie, why should I not then trust him and place all of my my hopes and everything on him? Because if he says that he will be with us, um, and he's saying that fear not. I mean, yes, we will get it. We will be afraid sometimes, but God is saying that you know what? Yes, you may be afraid, but just remember that I am here for you. I will help you. You can trust me. Thank you. Thank you. So I see a lot of hands. What? Let me. Who, who was first? Okay, I'll start from this end. So Sister Marcia, Sister John, uh, the William, Sister Veronica, and Sister Charlene will be the last. Now, let's be brief in our, our, our speeches so at least we can cover a lot. So just you know, when, I start, when I started <coughs> reading this memory verse, mm -hmm. The first word, <coughs> fear not. Mm -hmm. What is that? Fear not. But when I continue for I am, who, who is I? Who, who, who is speaking? But as I continue to, through the text, I recognize, because further he says, be not dismayed. All these things are asking of me, but who is asking it? But then he says that I am your God. So when I, I recognize here, that for me to do anything out of selfishness, I have to love God. I have to know God. And if I know God and obey him, then I will be able to do everything out of, without being selfish. Thank you. Thank you. So you, when we, the, the, the key word there, obey. Obeying God. Yes, ma'am. Um, we talk about love and we talk about s selfishness. Mm -hmm. And for man, selfishness is about I. Mm -hmm. This text is positive about who God is. Mm -hmm. I am. I will. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 the, it's the I, but it's a positive that is going to strengthen us, is going to be with us. It's not going to destroy us like the I in the man is selfishness. Thank you. So God is in saying I... Is not being selfish, whereas normally as human beings, when we use the word I, we're actually sort of <laughs> putting us on the pedestal we're not supposed to be. Yeah? So, yeah, thanks. Um, was, was this, uh, the, did I see your hand, Mr. Lovelace? Okay, Mr. Lovelace, go on. Three weeks now, you all see my hands. I mean, <laughs> go on, see, go on, Mr. Lovelace, go on. <laughs> well, 
The text is telling it is me. Mm -hmm. It's uh, telling me it is God will do everything for me. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells me, put not your trust in princess nor in man in whom there is no help. Put your trust in me. And this is a learning process for me. Faith come by hearing. And if God is speaking to me, it is he's going to work within me. It's not me. So selfishness come when I also depending upon self, you know, and not depending mm -hmm. on the Lord. And it said, fear not, for I am with you, Carly. For I am your God, Carly. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you, Carly. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So, it is God mm -hmm. and him alone. Mm -hmm. Not me, it is him. Thank you. you. Know. Yeah. So, uh, Loveless is, is being practical there. She's putting a, a name. Say, God is saying, Carly, I'll help you. Carly, I'll do this. So, she's putting herself in that position that God is just talking directly to her. Yes, Elder. Thank you, Elder. Yes, uh, I think, firstly, it is no lack of love. Why God used the word fear not is simply because when we fear, we lose our rationality. Mm -hmm. In the Garden of Eden, the holy pair, when they sinned, what did they do? They ran away. Mm -hmm. and, and then I, I think Adam said, we were afraid. Mm -hmm. So, the rationale behind the fear not is, is simply saying that I'm behind you. I'm your rock. Mm -hmm. I'm with you always. Uh, just before I, I went further, I w at work, the Eid, Wednesday, and my colleagues, they brought some, you know, uh, home cooking and everything. And this young man brought chocolate biscuit. And what shocked me was is that he said, could you help me open the biscuit? And I was going to say, well, you go hands. <laughs> but, but the spirit impressed on my heart to open the biscuit. Then later on, in front of everyone, he said, I'm so happy that I was accepted and the, the gift that we brought was appreciated. And that hit me hard that if I had walked away and said, well, you could open it yourself, you would have been hurt. You see, so when God called us, he called us to reveal his character. Even though they are Muslims, he thought about us. They cook. That's the day they show they are love to their Allah, but the rationale behind it, I'm not going to go into that, but what I'm saying is that challenging us is that I have been in this church a few years. Love does not come to us naturally. You know, we are naturally selfish, we are naturally ambitious, and we are naturally stubborn. So when you look at the Bible, the Old Testament, to the New you realize that God has been provoked. God has been insulted. God has been mocked. And even us today, we're talking about love and selfishness. But I stand here to declare again to remind you that when you stand to in front of God and say things and you do not believe in and don't practice, you committed a sin. Let me just be brief. Just uh, two, two minutes. An elder, not these current elders, committed adultery. I was the head elder at the time. I didn't know anything. I didn't hear anything. My family knew anything. But I was attacked for no apparent reason. And, and I came and I said, what have I done? I didn't even know anything was done. But people who instigated that thing is because of jealousy, because of the changes made. I came in the church and I broke the system. They had no respect for the pastors. They think it turned into their national church. So I speak here to declare that love doesn't come to us naturally, but what comes to us naturally 
a selfish way. And so let us be careful. Let us be careful what we say here and remind you that you are standing in the presence of God. This is a worship center. Be careful what you say. Thank you. Sister Veronica. I would take two hands and last hand. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, um, I was really listening keenly to the text. Um, I think I didn't hear where she read it from, um, where she read it from, but it was really good, and I was thinking, oh, that text is really good. There's so much in the text. There's, um, the text is saying um, what we should do and what things have been done to us as well. And I, I was thinking of this word, trust and faith, faith in God. And I saw this... Um, this in my phone. I don't even know how um, it, it came in there, but I put it on my status. We said, faith is when you praise God in the storm, you trust him in the valley. You follow him in the dark, and if God is the reason why you are still breathing, praise him. You know, when you've been through a lot of things, you have to remember that the Lord is there with us, um, and we should leave things to him because he will make the way straight for us. And that's what I get out of that text. Um, it's really comforting. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I, I was just examining the eyes. He says, mm. I am. I will. I will help you. I will strengthen you. These are definitely promises. But he's asking us to do something. Mm. And I think what he's actually saying is surrender. Mm. He's not saying don't fear because he knows that we will have fearful moments, yeah. but he's saying you don't need to mm. because I will. And I think the more complicated my life, our lives get, my life gets, I can reflect that I actually, <laughs> I have no choice but to surrender and let him do it because I cannot actually do it by myself. I think when I was younger, I was very independent. I was raised to be so. And this probably doesn't come naturally to me. But the more complicated my life becomes, I realize I can't, I don't know the answer to this question. So I must surrender. I must not fear. I must let him do it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as, as, as I said that was the last hand. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through a lesson and then I'll come back to you. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Um, <clears throat> the, the writer gives us that text. And he links it with the, the destruction of Jerusalem. Now, um, how many of us here are adrenaline junkies? Adrenaline junkies. Yeah. <laughs> so, brother, bro, brother, did, did you <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I, me and Yusuf, we are, we are the same. <laughs> so, um, I, I like adrenaline pumping. So I do certain things that maybe most of us do not do, driving fast, going for roller coasters, drive all these crazy things, heights and like, I'm not scared of heights. So um, I, I, I would go for, the other time I went to, to uh, Victoria Falls and I was going to do bungee jumping, but uh, uh, my dear wife and Nathaniel, they, they, they said, no, no, don't, don't do that, don't, don't do that. So I, I would do it because here's the thing, I've seen others do it, so I'm thinking, I'll come out safe. Yes? So one day I was driving and I said to my wife, don't worry, I'm, I'm, you are safe. Fear not. Uh, she's like, can you just slow down? I'll give you what happened. So um, we left, uh, you, you left church, I think. I was on A13 and uh, I was driving. Um, behind me came a black BMW and he flashed lights, say, get out of my way. So I, I said to my wife, um, th th this guy, He's a joker. He thinks I can't go fast. <laughs> so I put my foot down. I hit 100 miles an hour, and the guy was coming. I hit 120 miles an hour, the guy was coming. I hit 140, the guy is coming. But by the moment, I, I broke the law. I'm commencing in church. So by the time I hit about 150, the guy disappeared. I couldn't see him. So I slowed down in front. The guy comes side by side, wound his window down. He shook his head, he looked at me, he did this. I looked to one of the top officers, police officers. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, he broke the law himself, he was rushing to nowhere. <laughs> so 
he beckoned to me and he shut his window down and sped off. I looked behind him. He had the cameras, uh, obviously, in, in, in his BMW and marked the police car. But what I'm, tra I'm trying to say is, so, so the, when, when he, I'm assuring her that he don't worry, the car is safe because I'm comfortable the way I'm driving. She's like, no, can you just give away, go this way? Um, but since then, he, my wife will tell you that she's gotten so comfortable that uh, even when I'm driving, she'll sleep. But if someone else is driving, she won't sleep. If she jumped in, any one of you here in the car, you're driving, she won't sleep. But once I start driving, because why? She's been with me for so long time, no so. But I'm prone to make an accident. So I'm not like a guard. Here, guard is promising us that fear not. Because he knows he's got us in his palm of the hand, yeah? So he, we, we can trust God. Now, here's the, here's, the, here's the thing. When we look at the story of the children of Israel, we see negative side and we see a positive side. Is that, is that right? So the negative side, that is those who didn't obey, they perished. So you would question here, you say, why, was, why did God allow? Actually, the writer says, why would God allow Jerusalem to be destroyed? Because Jesus Christ is talking to the disciples and he says, you see that building there, that beautiful building, that temple there, not a stone will be left standing and turned. So everything will be completely gone. So the question would be, you, you are God, what's your, what is your role? Why can't you prevent this from happening? And that's why some, so those of us who are believers, we, we face questions like, as you and my sister, I'll, I'll give at the end. So we, we face questions when we go, people say, if God is God who we say he is, why is he allowing all this suffering? The wars that are happening. And someone said, uh, joking last week, says, um, you see, if uh, Abraham be behaved himself, there would not be a war there. But be because Abraham listened and ended up having Ishmael, and now we've got wars everywhere. Um, so let's not blame Ad Ad Abraham. We, 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 we've got evidence that God can be with us, is with us, or not can be with us, is with us. And he says, I'll be with you, I'm not going to. So let me run through a lesson. So I'll, I'll give a brief uh, summary of um, what I learned from the lesson, then we'll contribute. Is that okay? So I, I just pray that all of you went through the lesson study. Okay, here, here it goes. So the introduction. In the introduction of, um, in, the, in the destruction of Jerusalem, we discover a, a foreshadowing of certain strategy, both to deceive and to destroy God's people. At the end time, Jesus' instructions in Matthew 24, which I believe we've read in Matthew 24, clearly outlines last day events in the, tech, in, in the context of Jerusalem's fall. Now, we've got how many days in a week? Seven. And the lesson study covers how many days? So, if you look at Sunday and Monday, they can go under one heading, love preserved. Yes? Because the both are talking about the preservation of life. So love preserves. And then when you look at um, Tuesday, love is faithful. Yeah? And when we go to Wednesday and Thursday, because it's Friday, it's just sort of a summary. So um, Wednesday and Thursday, love Ex exemplified. So love put into us, into practice. So it's exemplified, it's an example, so it's shown, it's in, put in reality. It's not just the love, I'm going to come here in front and talk about it, but actually this love, if you read about the lesson study, you, you notice that these people did what love means should be done, or it intends to do. So let's look at the 10 points, then I'll quickly um, allow people to, to speak. So the first point, or the, the second, I did the, the first one already. The second, events that culminated in the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70 are part of the great controversy. Before the cross, Jesus grieved over the fate of Jerusalem while on Mount Olives, Matthew 23, 37, and 38, or to 38. Despite several interventions through prophets and finally the Savior himself, Israel rejected God and forfeited his protection. Jesus, third, Jesus gave instruction on how Israel could be saved from destruction in AD 70, Matthew 24, 15 to 20. Within that context, Jesus took an opportunity to also celebrate or elaborate details on the final events of earth's history. While many people stayed back when the sign of their movement to safety was revealed, the faithful used the same to, to, to leave Jerusalem into safety. 
So it's like someone says, leave, leave this building, there's going to be fire. Some of you are going to see if there's no fire here. And those who hear the instruction or heed the instruction, they are saved. And then you, you, the building collapses on us and we, we, we die. Who do you blame? Yourself. Because this, this instruction didn't just come to a few. It came to everyone. So um, fourth, Jerusalem was destroyed because of sustained rebellion and rejection of God's providence over centuries, having been given the opportunity to repent. Satan steers rebellion in fallen humanity, exemplified by the Roman invasion and destruction of Jerusalem. God has always acted in love, but Satan has acted in what? Has always acted in selfish, acted selfishly, lured people to destruction. So most of us, we may see things with nice faith. One of the tactics the devil used to destroy Jerusalem was the division within the ranks of the Jews. During the siege, different factions uh, fought among themselves and millions died. Why is it important for the church to be united in its mission? So that's a question. Why is it important for us to be united in our mission? So we can't do mission as singles. We can, but when we come here as a church, we need to be united in order, in order for us to, over, to overcome. So the second question is, at the same time, can there be danger in uni, uniformity? Uniformity, I mean. Is there a danger for us to be uniform? Well, I say yes. So those are questions that we, we need to ask. Six, through God's providence, the church flourished despite persecutions. Acts chapter 2, 41, Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4 verse 4, 31. Acts chapter 5, 42, Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Even when Satan instigated persecution of God's children, dispersed all over the regions, many remained faithful. The early church demonstrated that it is possible to be faithful amid persecution and suffering. Seven, generations of faithful Christians have also endured persecution through the dark ages for preserving God's word. The nature of persecution today can come in form of ridicule, Yet men, soldier, yet men soldier on and continue to reach out to others who have not heard him. It is important to portray the love of God in a world of suffering. Throughout eight, throughout history, God's love, grace, and patience is manifested, starting with giving Lucifer the freedom to cho of choice. Yet God warns us, up ahead of time, about the consequences of choices. For instance, 35 years elapsed between the time the warning regarding the destruction of the temple was given to the actual destruction. So nine, through the influence of the Holy Spirit, the early Christians demonstrated God's love, not just in words, but in deeds. Through acts of kindness and love, God's message was readily accepted. This was contrary to the efforts of the devil to deface the image of God in humanity. While the devil steals, kills, and destroys, God through us wants to give life to as many as are willing to accept him. Then the last point, as the great controversy rages, the devil through selfishness wants to destroy God's creation. God on, other, sorry, God on the other hand is dis demonstrating his love through Christ. We are Christ's ambassadors to others in a co contradicting responsible for the evil raging in the controversy. That's the last part. So if you notice, if you followed, I know it was, I was, I was doing it in, in, in haste. Uh, if you followed, that is summary of the entire lesson. So um, uh, if I didn't do justice to the way you thought I would do lesson study, pardon me, but I've run through lesson study so that next time we can study as well, then we are together. Now comments. Um, let me allow the hands that haven't spoken yet. You got a question? Okay, let's take a question and I'll, 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 give, I'll get the hands. Elder. Um, my mind has been revolving around the comment that Ed William made, and, I'm, and I was hoping that we would shed more light on that comment. He says something like, love is not natural to us, but selfishness is. We're talking about love and selfishness, yeah? God is love, and we are his little children. He created us in his own image. We have his characteristics. Second Corinthians 5.14, the 
New English version says, Christ's love controls us. His love compels us. And before Eve sinned, they were without, they were, there was no sin before, before that. Before they ate the apple, there was no sin. So before that sin, there was love. So love was in existence before sin entered. If we, if we consider selfishness as, as part of sin. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm struggling to understand love not being natural to us, but selfishness is. So if, if, if we have more explanation to that, I think I want to understand how that is. Anyone, anyone, it, it, it doesn't have to be you. Anyone can respond to that. Love was perfected. Summarize the order so that okay. the others can talk. And so when sin came into being, we respond to our, that sin nature than love. And we have lost the ability to love. And so God says in Ezekiel 36, verse 26 and 27, I'll give you a new heart with the right spirit. And so we do not have the love of God. That nature is gone. And so when you become a Christian, you take on the culture of Christ, then you are being transformed according to 2 Corinthians uh, 5, 17 and 21. And so by beholding Christ, you are changed inwardly. And so love doesn't come to us naturally. So who killed Jesus? The pe very people he created. Because they have no inclination to accept the truth he preached. The miracles he performed, they could not accept that. And so, what did they do? They crucified him. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, I'll take the hands. Uh, let me, Elder, I don't know whether your question is uh, satisfied. Answered. Let me take the hands, then, we, if we have enough time, or which you don't have, I'll come back to. Can I take his, uh, Brother Squin and his sister behind me next to Brother Derek? Pastor Squin. Thank you very much. Uh, all, lots of good things were said correctly. The text gives a lot of promises. Mm -hmm. The question I would like to ask us is, what's there in the Bible, in the ministry of Jesus and the apostles, that gives us the assurance that those promises would be fulfilled? No, the text, the memory text is full of promises that God will do, and God can't lie. He will fulfill. Well, what assurance do we have in the Bible, in the life of Jesus, in the ministry of Jesus, can give us the assurance that we can rely on what God has said in this text? So instead of being a question, Pastor, can you give us the assurance so that it, because of time? Okay, thank you very much. The, the I, was, I was hoping somebody would say it. Jesus has said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He has risen. And that's why he could say to the rascal, the devil, when he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and said, I will give you all these things if you will worship me. Thank you. Thank and you. the text is on worship God. Thank you. Put our trust in him. Thank you. So as um, the sister at the back, my sister, your name? My name? Yes. My name is Melanie. Melanie, um, thanks. Good. Happy Sabbath to you all. I, this text um, in Isaiah 41.10 is um, showing love, faith, in God, and when I look at it, I think of little children. You know, I've got children, and you know, if you say to your child, they trust you. You know, your children trust you. Mm. And if something was happening to them, you know, and you say, "Jump!" If the house was on fire or something, you say, "Jump!" They will jump to you because they trust you. And so we must come like little children you know, who trust their parents. They won't go to somebody else and jump that somebody else will catch them, but they will come to you. And this is what I see in there, that God wants us to be like little children and trust him. 
with all our hearts because he has overcome. And so because he has overcome, we can overcome as well. Thank you. Thank you. So we come to a close of our, our Sabbath school. I didn't see your hand, sir. I did. I didn't see your hand, though. It was up. It was up. <laughs> I, I didn't give permission to speak, though. Uh, go, go on, sir, speak. Oh, we are friends in hell. Happy Sabbath. <laughs> you know, as I heard Melody talks, Melody talks about children, remember my little boy. Can we summarize? Because I'm running out Yeah, he was, he was about two, three years old, and he was stood on the top of the stairs. And I said, Jason, jump. And he just took one step down, and he jumped. And I caught him. The thing is, we've got to have a relationship with God. You know, we can talk as much. I mean, when you think about our church, the Bible says we come behind with no gifts. And for the lessons that we've been learning, we shouldn't have a problem in understanding. You know, Psalms 125 says this, They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed. As the mountains run about Jerusalem, so the Lord's run about these people forever. Verse 3 said, The rod of the wicked will not always rest on the lot of the righteous. We must have this faith in God. And we talk about love. Yes, we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. It's natural for, for us to do things. But when we accept Christ, the first fruit of the Spirit is love. Mm. So we shouldn't have a problem in loving each other in church. Thank you. And Thank we you. still have it still, anyhow. Th Thank you. Um, I think you, you sort of summarize what I want to say. So in summary, before you come, my sister, um, let's be attentive. So the lesson study is summarized this way. The rejection of the love of God resulted in some people perishing. Yes? Jesus Christ cried. Jesus Christ wept as he approached Jerusalem. He knew that they would suffer the well-deserved consequences of their stubborn rejection of God's loving cause, which they rejected. He cried because the tragedy could have been avoided. Because God loves us so much that he does not want anyone to die but for everyone to have eternal life. History tells us that the Jews rebelled in the year 66 AD against Roman abuses. The various Jews factions fought among themselves while the Romans laid siege to the city. In the year 70 AD, everything ended. Titus destroyed Jerusalem and the temple. One million Jews perished, but history does not tell us how certain or certain incited the Jews to rebel and the Romans to revenge. The destruction of Jerusalem was the direct work of the devil. By turning away from the source of life, Israel was at the mercy of an enemy that only seeks destruction and death. Then God's care for his people. In his love, God gave an opportunity to everyone who wanted to escape the destruction. He gave a sign, Jerusalem surrounded by armies. And they, they, they retreated, remember, and some still stayed. Those, we are told Christians, no Christian died. Everyone left. Those who heed to the call. Gaius Sergius Gallus fulfilled the sign in the year 16, I mean 66 AD. The siege was lifted, and the zealot leader, Eleazar Ben Simon, pursued the Romans and defeated them. Everyone who believed in Jesus' words took advantage of that moment when Jerusalem was left and guarded to flee. A few months later, Nero sent Vespian. The quell, I mean, to quell the rebellion. From the year 67 AD to 70 AD, the siege was permanent. Um, so therefore, what we are saying is, as we come to the last one, the, my, my last words is, you, you discover that the, the Christians were told they, 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 they were united in love, the love we're talking about. So when we meet Jesus Christ, we become changed. We no longer become the same. So we want to have a problem with this love issue we're talking about. Yes? And now, here's one thing. They say, don't brush everyone with the same brush. Yes? So, um, when, if I stand in front here and I say, we don't do this, I don't know, maybe some of you are doing it. But corporately, we are not doing it. I may not see it. But there are those of us here who are used by the Holy Spirit, who've got love in themselves. They've been touched by the love of Christ, and they're able to do that. Now, we find that the disciples, we are told, um, and the people of old, once the Holy Spirit was, was with them and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, what happened? They shared everything. And one fun preacher said they shared everything. The only thing they didn't share was their wives, those who are married. But they shared everything. So if we get to a point whereby we start sharing everything, 
and literally meaning everything. But uh, selfishness does not allow us to share sometimes. Sometimes even the word of God, some of us want to, as if God is in our pocket. We become selfish with the God that we serve. Now, um, um, now as we share God, what I'm saying to you, brothers, we talk about this love. This love that we talk about is, is, is pointless for us to go out in the community there, to go and show love to the community when you don't show love to these who are here. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be pretending. Because once those people in the community they come, they come part of us, they want to feel the love as well. So we are going to show them love now. Come, come, we love you. We are going to do this for you. But when they come here, we neglect them. It's, 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 it will happen. So first, let's love those who are within. And once we've loved ourselves, then we'll feel the power. Because we're not going to give what we don't have. We'll be pretending. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I want to thank Elder for leading the lesson review this morning so well. Sons and Daughters of God, page 101. It says, love is not simply an impulse, a transitory emotion dependent upon circumstances. It is a living principle, a permanent power. The soul is fled by the streams of pure love that flow from the heart of Christ, as well as, as a wellspring that never fails. And this because the art is in love with Jesus. Our affection for one another springs from our common relation to God. We are one family. We love one another as he loved us. When compared to this truth, sanctified, disciplined affection, the shallow courtesy of the world, the meaningless expression of the effusion friendship are as chaff to the cheat. To love as Christ love means to manifest unselfishness at all times and in all places by kind words and pleasant looks. It will lead us to bestow little acts of attention, to make concession, to perform deeds of kindness, to speak tender, true, encouraging words. It will lead us to sympathize with those whose hearts hunger for sympathy. And that leads us to, I'm going to ask us to, and encourage us to study lesson three, to prepare for next Sabbath. And the topic we're going to be studying is light shines in the darkness. So as we love Christ, we are going to allow the light of Christ to shine through us so that those who are in darkness will see Christ and come to know him. And our lesson, our memory text will be taken from John 12 and verse 35. And with that, I say, Thank you for making it Ilford Lane Sabbath School today. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the services and have a blessed week. See you next week, same place, same time, 9.30, Sabbath School, Ilford Lane. Thank you. Before we close, at this time, Elder Kufa will do our closing prayer. Thank you. Yeah, I know. The time is gone, and I'm just running into 11. Uh, yeah, I'll totally miss that one. So at this time, we're going to have the closing hymn. After, at that time, our offering will be collected during the hymn, yeah? And our closing hymn is 341, To God Be the Glory. To God be the glory, great things he has done, yeah? So let us stand and sing our closing song.
Just before I pray, just um, I notice that the people love to interact and to discuss the word of God. Just to bring to to speed, I know Elder Ian who, who announced about it. So we will be having Bible studies. So in the morning, you, know, you notice in the morning you don't have enough time to discuss. So um, by God's grace, starting from next Sabbath, we'll be extending the afternoon by having Bible studies. So we invite you to come so that we can stay and. Uh, Discuss the word of God together or read the word of God together. Let us pray. Our God and our creator above in heaven, Lord, we are so grateful for your goodness towards us. The song says to God be the glory for the good, the great things that he's done. Where would we be, dear God, without you? When we look at where you brought us from and where we are now, Dear God, we can only say it's been through your grace. And therefore, we want to praise your name, glorify your name. Dear God, just for who you are. You never leave us alone just like you promised in the word. That you never leave us alone. That we can trust you, that you're going to be with us through and through. Ours is just to be obedient. And therefore, this morning we pray that God, that you may speak to us through the Holy Spirit. To encourage us, dear God, to remain faithful in all that we do. Be with us all here and those of our family members who are not here. We know, dear God, that sometimes we struggle with this sin issue. We struggle to show love to each other. We struggle to do certain things that we are supposed to do as, as believers. But we know that all things are possible through you. It's never too late for us to change our behaviors or our characters. We are told that by beholding, we become changed. And if we choose to behold you, Jesus Christ, I sincerely believe that will be changed from today. Help us to grow in our spiritual walk with you. Help us to love each other the way you want us to love each other. We ask for forgiveness for our dear God, we've fallen short. And therefore, this morning, we pray that this begins to be a new beginning for us. This begin, begins to be a new starting point. That the God, we are going to look around, not neglecting those we've neglected in the past. That we are going to show sympathy to those who need sympathy. We are going to reach out for those who need to reach out for. Going forward, dear God, we pray that you may not uh, write us off for the book of heavens, but that you are going to write our names in the book of life. How joyful it will be, dear God, for us to be found in your heavenly kingdom where there will be no more sickness, death, or putting out, no more selfishness, but love abounding forever. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We will take, we will take a five-minute break for those who are First time with us, we have the bathroom to our right, and there's one upstairs. Divine worship will be in five minutes.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. We are about to go into our divine worship. But we'll kindly listen to the announcements that we have tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. on Zoom is our board meeting. That's tomorrow is our board meeting at 10.30 a.m. Pierre, if you can put up the, the seminar by pastor. It's a, a world religion seminar that's be taking place right here, our church, as we put these slides up, bear, bear with us. It's from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. and it will be on Zoom from April 21st to the 25th. I'll get back to that one. Now, as you already know, Bible studies will be happening next week, Sabbath, in the afternoon. So lunch will be provided for each and every one as we have our Bible studies next week. I think we're having problems. Here we go. Thank you. That's Ilford Lane and Ilford Central. So you can see it on the screen. World Seminar, 25 to the 25th. 21st to the 25th, from 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. So we will let us support these programs that will be happening. It will be on Zoom. Also, if you can put the one up for the hygiene training. Now, the hospitality team, the South England Conference is having a food hygiene training at the Advent Center from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's the last Sunday of April. So the hospitality team, this one is for you. And those who from the church would like to do it also, you are welcome, but you need to register. Is that okay? Thank you. Now, remember our Wednesday night and Friday night prayer, prayer meetings and Friday night Vespers. I've heard that last week, Wednesday, we have a good amount. Let us continue, because a prayer in church keep us closer to God. If we don't pray, our relationship with God, the lesson study speaks about relationship. As a church, we need prayer. And Wednesday night prayer meeting, we can pray for each other. So we are asking you to come out it's on Zoom, so it's a, it is in the comfort of your home. So all members and visitors are welcome to join. These are the announcements that we have. Now hand over to the prayer team. Good morning, church. Morning. It's a privilege to be here. For the sake of our visitors, this is a time when, as a church, we appoint one family every week, and we concentrate our prayers on that family. And last week, we were praying for Sister Marcia. Could I ask you to come over, please? And for this coming week, we will be praying for Sister Annette Okshakin. Sister Annette, could you please come? Right. 
Masia, it's your turn to tell the church how your week has been. I've had a great week. Uh, you know, um, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. And every day with Jesus, oh, I'm able to love more and more. And so this week, I felt the prayer of the church. Amen. I know that you have all prayed. Because I'm, um, I'm, 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 I'm getting to some places where I have been asking the Lord to lead me. And you just continue to pray for me and my family. And also for the family that I've asked for the prayer for. They're doing very well. Amen. They're doing very well. The wife is in high spirit. And we just continue to pray. God is helping us to come to terms with this sudden death. And so Amen. with that, we say to God be the glory. Amen. 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 So it's time for you to give a prayer basket. Is this on it? How do you want us to pray for you this week? <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, it's a surprise, really, because I've had a really stressful but blessed week as well. So I'd like to pray for families. Families is very important because they're under stress at the moment. Um, and also, i like to pray for employment for people, for jobs, and uh, I like to pray for everything. <laughs> 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 but no, um, I will um, sure that uh, God will be blessed this week and whatever I'm doing, because I've got a, not a stressful weekend, but I'm going to achieve all the goals. So I'm praying that God would um, make all the goals and the things that I need to do be completed. Thank you guys for praying for me for this week. Thank you. Thank you. Shall we pray? Father God, we, we pause a little while in your presence, thanking you for bringing us to this place, this place of prayer. We thank you, Lord, that we could have the opportunity to pray for one another. And so this week, Lord, we, we realize and we appreciate that the great controversy continues to rage on in our hearts. And there are so many issues as we come. Lord, I pray that you will accept our praises. You accept our wishes. You accept all the things that we are bringing before you as individuals. We thank you for the privilege of praying for Sister Marcia. Thank you, Lord, that uh, the prayers that we continue to deposit in the bank of heaven never go unnoticed that every single prayer that we will ever say will never go without Jesus knowing about it. And so we will continue to pray for our sister and her family. And as we go over this week to Sister Annette and her family, Lord, I pray that you will give us the desire to continue to call upon you on their behalf. We pray that every prayer, Lord, that will be said will be coming from a very safe space a place where, Lord, we are wishing our sister nothing but the best. I pray that you will move her from where she is now to, to higher ground. I pray that you bless her as she leaves her house. I pray that you give her the desire to know you better than she has ever done before. I pray that you bless her children, Noah and Esther. I pray that all those aspirations that they have in their hearts will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. And we are praying this coming week. Lord, I pray for good health. I pray for joy that surpasses all human understanding. Joy that the world will marvel and will say, just where is the source of this joy amidst a troubled world? Lord, I'm praying that you will give us strength to continue being the mother in Zion, 
to be the mother, the best mother that she could be, the best friend that she could be, the best sister that she could be, and the best auntie that she could be. Lord, I am praying for a special revelation from you on her life this week, that she will come and testify that she has been in the presence of Jesus. And for sure, when you are in the presence of Jesus, you could never, ever be the same. So, Lord, all of us, I pray that you give us the desire to know you better. Forgive us our sins and get us to a place where we are ready to receive you, where we are ready to be translated. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Look out in the congregation. I have seen so many visitors. So, this morning as I was outside waiting for the speaker, I saw a lady coming out of the bus and she was looking, looking. And then she crossed the road, I realized that it was a sister coming to our church. And as I sit down, look at Sister Thelma, <laughs> and look at that sister, I'm sure they are sisters. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask the church, the church members, you're going to do the welcome this morning. I'm going to ask each and every one of you to go beside a visitor, get their names, where they're from, then I'm going to ask you, and if you fail, I'll give you an F. <laughs> I'm going to ask for him to play Smile a While, give your face a rest. Church members, now is your time. Can we all get up? I know we've done it this morning for Sabbath school, so I'm going to ask you, let us go greet our visitors in Jesus' name. Come on. And those who are watching us online, if you can type in where you are coming from, where you're watching us from, that would be good. Don't forget their names now. Sister Shala, can you do a special prayer for our visitors at this time, please? My visitors. My visitors, we're going to give you a special prayer at this time. So Sister Shala, just pray a special prayers for our visitors at this time.
let's pray. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we want to thank you once again for bringing us together in your house, rejoicing in your presence. We thank you for bringing your children here. They could have been somewhere else. And there is no visitor in your house. Your children are here to worship, to have um, a special encounter with you today, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will visit them, that they will not go home the way they came, but they will be blessed in a special way today, O oh Lord. And I pray for the person that is going to bre uh, break the bread of life for us, O oh Lord. I pray that you will anoint um, his tongue, O oh Lord, that the, 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 the word that will come out from his mouth we come out with, uh, with powerful and, be uh, and we will all be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, I commit all the special friends that have Amen. come to worship with us today, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will meet them at the point of their needs in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that they, they, as we are going, they, they are a blessing to us here. Father, we will be a blessed to them as well in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, because we know you will do more than we are even expecting. Bless our days today and bless our uh, uh, the week ahead of us, O oh Lord. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So welcome to you all from Ilfo Lane Church. Now hand over to the praise and worship team. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Do you know, I am really, really excited today. You know why I'm excited? Because um, someone that came here as a visitor, um, Brother Lewis, he chose the songs today. And that gives hope to every visitor that we are wanting to welcome each and every one of you and um, I just feel so blessed by this and I know that what songs he's chosen to bless us with um, we will enjoy and we will sing with all our hearts and to start with um, the song that's been chosen was five to four Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Yes, this sweet. 
serve a risen savior oh. who's in the world today i know that he is living whatever men may say i see his hand of mercy i hear his voice of cheer and just the time i need him is always near this is what lewis wants you to know that you can trust Jesus.
lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujah to Jesus Christ the King the hope of all who see Him the help of all who find none other is so loving so by that. Amen. The last song that he chose is a praise song. Mm. We have to end in praise. Mm -hmm. And it says, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. So let us sing this confidently because I am so thankful that he's done that for me and I know it's the same for you. the Lord. <laughs> I'm 
so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Sing him 538. Guide me, O the great Jehovah.
your throne this lovely Sabbath morning because of the assurance that we have in your son Jesus. We know that you love us and that you stand on our side all time. We thank you Lord for the week and your guidance, the angels that were with us, your presence Lord that took us through all kinds of experiences that we went through. We want to testify that you have been faithful and you continue to be faithful. As we are in your presence at this hour, we humble our hearts and we invite you, we invite your angels, we invite the Holy Spirit. We are asking that we experience your presence in a very marked manner this morning. There could be people in our midst that are not feeling well or that are going through a very difficult time. I want to bring them, Lord, to your presence. I know, Lord, that you have demonstrated that you are able to deliver us from all our troubles. I am pleading for those people, Lord, that are hurting. May your presence comfort them. Lord, may they experience your healing at this very hour. Some are even watching online and we're praying, Lord, as we come into your presence that this blessing is extended to them as well. Father, we thank you for the person you've sent to share your word with us this morning. I am asking that you open our minds so that, Lord, we may be receptive of your word and that, Lord, we may use our reasoning to understand it and that we may put everything that we, have, we are going to be taught into practice. All this we ask in the lovely name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. At this time, our scripture reading will be taken from the book of Luke. Luke chapter 10, verses 30 to 36. That will be read to us by our brother, Brother Yusuf. Our scripture reading will come from the book of Luke chapter 10 and the verse is from verse 30 to the verse 36. Hoping that we are all there. The Bible records. Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. 
Now by chance, a priest was going down that, that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Verse 36 says, Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And may the Lord bless the reading. As the musicians play, I want to ask the PA team to display this slide for our tithes and offering. This time we ask our deacon and deaconesses to come and collect our tithes and offering. The time has come to hear the spoken word. Those who are just joining us, we want to say welcome to you for joining Ilfo Lane Church at this time. It's just about morning, so good morning to you. The one that the Lord has chosen to speak to us this morning he spent 14 years at the BUC as the education sponsor. He is an educator, I think for most of his life. He was the former principal of John Loughborough School. He came today with Sister June, who she was also a former principal of John Lafka School. Brother Keith is an author, also Sister June. They, they, they have some books that they have written. They both attend the Holloway Church. Today, Elder Keith is going to speak to us on the topic profile of the good Samaritan. But before my dear brother comes, 
Sister Higgins is going to bless our heart with song of meditation. Church. I will repeat again. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. This is a very lovely sunny morning yes. that God has blessed us with. Yes. And um, this morning I'm going to sing this song. And you know, when I look into this Christ in song, every song that written in it has Amen. come from the Bible, come from the Word of God. Because this one says, the title, entitled, Will There Be Any Stars? And it comes from, They that be teachers shall shine as the stars forever and ever. Daniel 12.3.
Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. And you're looking so wonderful. Amen. Beautiful. If you were up here, you would, you would be amazed at what you see. Amen. All the colors and the smiles. Amen. I'm so much uh, happy to be here with you. I want to thank you, Pastor, uh, Pastor Gil, and uh, your elder, the one who has been looking after me so well. I want to thank uh, Sister Higgins for that wonderful song. Uh, it was very, very well rendered. Thank the Lord, of course. And I am not really uh, a stranger because when you, when you used to be elsewhere, I used to come when, when I used to work at the church. I'm now retired about 14 years now. Um, so uh, I'm not unfamiliar with many of you. And I see one or two other faces here which uh, I need to just recognize. First of all, I'm my colleague from Holloway, uh, Dr. Drew, I know she's been well, well to come already, but uh, could you stand so that we can see you? Dr. June Amen. Alexia. Amen. Uh, she's from Holloway, and uh, we call her the education guru. <laughs> 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 she's been running education for about eight, seven years or so. Wow. I see one, one elder here from Holloway, Elder Moya. Uh, yes, uh, good friend, Amen. Elder Moya. Yeah, yeah. You're now locally here. I, I came to bring you back. <laughs> and Derek, uh, from, he used to be at Holloway too. And uh, Sister Veronica, not Holloway, but uh, Holcomb Road at uh, Chingford uh, Church. Um, so I, I have some wonderful uh, friends here. And I'm so glad to be here uh, with you today. I, I hope um, you too will be glad to have me <laughs> here today. And your, your elder here, you know, some of you might know that uh, I work with, him, with the male voice choir at Holloway and elsewhere. And he has a lovely voice. He could sing, I think he could sing the baritone or, or second bass easily. <laughs> So I'm on a recruit, recruitment. <laughs> I'm on a recruitment drive. <laughs> the Lord has sent me for you. <laughs> and anyone else who would have liked to join the, the male voice choir. Sorry, Sister Higgins, but you know, you <laughs> but you know, you you can sing solo for us. I mean, back here. <laughs> so it's nice to be here um, with you today. And um, again, I want to thank you, Pastor, for inviting me to be here. I, I hope um, what I say today will be of some encouragement, and uh, you will not leave here just the same. Then my mission would have been in vain. I really f hope that what I'm going to say today is coming from my heart. And I hope that, oh, by the way, I, I didn't uh, acknowledge Pastor Schoon. <laughs> A, a colleague of mine way back. Thank you. Uh, my apologies for not recognizing just now. Uh, yes, but you know, we work together. Yeah. So, so, uh, I, I, so uh, if I left out any other friend uh, that I missed here, please forgive me. Uh, Lynette, uh, <laughs> from Hol again from Holloway. I, I, I'm not going to say I came to take you back. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> so um, back to the message. I, I hope that what I say to you today will be of some encouragement to you. 
uh, you not, will not leave uh, the same. If not, my journey here would be just a bit uh, of a waste of time. I hope not. I, I believe what, what I want to say. Some of you might know what, what I'm going to say, and uh, it might not be new to you. For you, then it will be one of encouragement and reinforcement of what you already know. For some, I hope it might be something new uh, in terms of what I want to speak about today. Can you hear me all right? Yep. Yes, go ahead. So, the, you know, you heard the topic before. Uh, uh, let me remind you what it is, uh, just in case you have not remembered. Uh, my topic is a profile of the Good Samaritan and the subtopic, a story about Jesus himself. And we'll develop that in, in, in a while. So I, I hope I, that you will follow me here. By way of introduction, I would want to say, first of all, that human beings were created for a purpose. And we can find that in Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Let's turn to that quickly, if you can. Genesis 1. Verse 26 to 28. And God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every over the cattle, and over all the creeping things, and every uh, thing that creep on the earth. So God created man in his own image. I don't want to pause here. So God created man in what? In his God own is. image. That's an important point to note. In his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the bir birds and over the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So I say to you without any uh, fear that you've been created and we've been created for a purpose. Mm. All of us have been created for a purpose. And sometimes people drift in life and we miss the fact that we've been called and created by God for a purpose. And I hope to develop that some more. T today there is a battle between good and evil. And you only have to watch your television screen. And sometimes even now people get put off from watching t TV. So much bad news. But we have been there's a battle raging between good and evil. It's part of the lesson, even I study as such, even last week. We have been caught in that battle between good and evil, the great controversy. The battle between right and wrong. It originated in heaven. We know that. Revelation 12, verse 9, if you want to turn to that quickly. Revelation 12, verse 9. I think you, you studied that last week, I, get, I think, in, in your Sabbath school lesson. But I will re read it here for you again. It says, so the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the old world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So there's that battle uh, raging. It started in, in heaven, but it's still going on. And we are caught in it. And the message here today is that we must be partners with God in the business of right and truth. We shouldn't be sitting on the fence or, or worst of all, be on the other side. We are here for a purpose. Amen. We are here to be partnership with, in partnership with God in eliminating evil from the, from the universe. Ultimately, it will be done. Evil will be eliminated. 
And we are called to play a part in that. We had a bad start uh, because we man sinned. But God did not give up on man. And he will, you know, he will not give up on man. And there's a reason for that. The reason is that, if we go back to the text, he breathed into man what? Breath Whose breath? His, his breath. breath. Did he breathe his breath in, into, into the animals? No. no. He breathed into man his breath. And I would say to us, biologically, we are part of him. His breath. That means that, you know, we must take our, our, our duties very seriously. We can't be in this world today and, and just like that. We are part of God in a small way. And so he will not let up on us. He will not allow us to be destroyed. That's why he died. That, that's why we, we are here today, because we have have given our hearts to him. We want to be redeemed from sin. So that's by way of introduction. Um, we are called. We are called. We are on a mission to help to defeat evil. Are you with me today? Yes. We are on a mission. We are called to help to defeat evil in not only earth, but in the universe, ultimately. Uh, so I carry on. to the matter of the parable. Uh, let me just define what a parable is. Remember, a parable is a small, seemingly simple story that reveals big truth about the kingdom of God. It reveals big truths about the kingdom of God. In the parable of the Good Samaritan, we find several, several tough questions and big answers that reveals an even bigger truth about God's eternal kingdom. I repeat that for emphasis. In the parable of the Good Samaritan, we find several tough questions and a bigger answer that reveals an even bigger truth about God's kingdom. So, for example, question, who will inherit eternal life? That's a big question. That's a big question. It's not a little question around the corner here. It's a tremendous question. Who will inherit eternal life? Uh, another question. Who is my neighbor? And you have seen that already in the, in the passage. Um, that was read to us. And I put a third one. Are we all here and our purpose in life just by way of an accident, accident or is the intention to our life? Do we do things uh, by way of accident or so we see someone in need and you know, we, our hearts move and we just respond uh, because of that? Oh, we have a mission, an intention to do something special for God. Are you with me today? I hope, hope so. And so let me move on. The Samaritan, which is a story, was not expected to be a good neighbor. He was not. He was not. The, the Samaritans were a marginalized group of people. They were the, on the periphery. They were outsiders. And uh, dare I say, uh, we are not unfamiliar to that for the feeling, do we? Do we? Some, we are marginalized sometimes. And we are on the periphery. Uh, but there's good news coming. They were not considered to be good people. Uh, they were, as I said, outsiders. They were even demonized. Mm -hmm. They were looked down on. They were looked down on. But 
when we have that experience, we need to uh, think about how we can overcome that. It's about uh, belonging. The Samaritans wouldn't feel that they belong. They were outsiders. But I say to you today, excluded groups must seize the initiative and themselves be the catalyst for forging a feeling of belonging. You don't wait to be invited to belong. You create that feeling of belonging yourself. Amen. Amen. Are you with me today? Yes. You don't have to wait. We must generate a feeling of togetherness as the platform for success in the wider area of society. We function in society, we experience, and I will not apologize, things like discrimination and racism and so forth. But we must together have a platform for success in the wider areas of society. Extending of love to each other is a crucial condition for belonging. And I know there was a discussion this morning in Sabbath school about, uh, about uh, love, and uh, our elder you know, talked about that, uh, that uh, it's not, we are more, we are more inclined to, to do wrong than to love. And that is so true. But by the grace of God, and with his spirit in our hearts, we can love. The extent of love to each other is a crucial, mm -hmm. a crucial condition for belonging. If you follow me here, if you're going to, you're outside here, we're outside. But if you're going to be, be, be people belonging, the crucial thing that will change um, attitudes and perception uh, to, to people is the business of love. Amen. Love conquers. Love conquers a lot of things. And so we should not wait to be invited to belong. We can belong by the actions we take. We take. So I'm going to move on a little bit again. Um, and uh, to belong, we have to develop. We have to grow. You can't go out there, and, uh, and if you also fall in this, a second part to my presentation here, it's not about you know, just us being in church here looking after ourselves. We've got to serve. But you can't serve unless you equip yourselves. And, we, and so we, must, we have the potential for growth. We have it. And I bring to you scripture, uh, to reinforce my point, I think Ephesians chapter um, four, verse—I uh, think, I think I take it from verse eleven through to to twelve or thirteen—and I read for you, New uh, King James Version, and he himself gave to some to be apostles, some prophets, some teachers. I'm a teacher, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for the equipping, note, there's a purpose, mm -hmm. for the equipping of the saints, mm -hmm. for the work of ministry. Mm -hmm. So you can't be in ministry if you're not equipped, mm -hmm. if you're not trained up, if you just, you know, uh, be a, a kind of a person, just uh, try to do it off the cuff. That is not good. We must be e equipped. Uh, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to be a perfect man and to measure, and to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. So we are, we are charged to grow. Here, we must equip ourselves. That's training, purpose, to work in ministry uh, for the body of Christ. Three things there in these uh, verses here. 
I hope you followed me today. Yes. 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 We are to grow. And every person here can grow. Mm-hmm. Every one of you. Every one of you can grow. And there I say as an educator too, um, if you don't grow, you might not um, help your children. Don't think that, you know, you send your children to school and uh, the teacher's responsible for the, their development, etc. You must grow. They must see you reading books, <laughs> not watching TV. <laughs> I, I hope you're not going to stone me when I leave here. <laughs> um, you must read. Uh, children will love to read if they see mom and, mom and dad reading. Mm. Because it becomes part of their culture. Uh, I, I, you, will, you understand what I'm saying? I'm, yeah, don't, yeah, don't, yeah. don't be mad with me. But uh, I'm trying to tell you that if you want your children to, to grow, you have to read. Yeah. You have to find time to read. Mm-hmm. It's not that we can't read. You know, you can read. All of you can read. But we don't make time to read. Mm-hmm. And we must make time to read. Uh, Read a book, um, you know, a book for three months and another one, another one, maybe four books also for the year. But let your children see you reading, and they will grow. Now uh, Moses uh, was very educated. He didn't come by just you know him sitting down and enjoying the palace. He had to learn. And if you uh, if you study the work of Josephus, that great uh, Jewish historian. Moses did a lot of things in, in terms of equipping himself to be a leader. He didn't just come overnight. He had to develop. And then we had Daniel. Mm-hmm. In chapter 1, mm-hmm. Daniel, verse 18 to 20. Mm-hmm. 20 he, it was stated that he was how many times wiser than the others? Anyone remember? If not, return to the scripture. Lest you, be, lest you think I'm making this up. Daniel chapter 1. Let's, uh, let's, you might even get there before me. <laughs> Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1, I'm getting there. And it's verses 18 to 20 in chapter 1. And it says... Now at the end of the days, when the king had said that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuch brought them in to Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them. It's, they were, they were it's, it, like university, they were meeting, uh, and they had to go through a series of uh, questioning as part of their study. They were called in, and the chief examiner was what? Who? Nebuchadnezzar, the king. You couldn't have it at a higher level. Mm-hmm. And he, he, then the king interviewed them, and among them, all, none was found like Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, Azariah. Therefore, they, were, they served before the king. And in all matters, here it comes the crunch uh, point. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding mm-hmm. about, about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all of his realm. Thus Daniel continued until the first year of King Cyrus. How many times? Ten. Ten times. Ten times. That's a, that's a big margin. It's a very wide margin. And that's because he was not only trained by his tutor, but he had God with him. We are with them. They were ten times. So I'm saying to us that God's people I must be ten times wiser <laughs> Right, right. Are you frightened about that? No, you can't just be, you can't just read it and say it only apply to Daniel. It does not only apply to Daniel. In your work, 
uh, as children who were here at school. He was with 10 times, you know, ahead of your, your, uh, your peers. Are you with me? Yes. Growth. Uh, those of you who are at work and you have skills, you must be 10 times sharper uh, than, than others. Not for sure. Not for sure. But you're magnifying God. And I say to you, uh, it is also important too because sometimes... Um, qualifications uh, I use I, I remember 2008 when we had the first crash and I saw people leave in the city with their boxes I don't know if you, any of you remember that yes uh, these were educated people but they were, were they were just employees I say to you brothers and sisters you must be an expert in what you do mm. it doesn't matter what it is mm. whether you're an electrician or uh, or a plumber or a lawyer, or a doctor. You must be 10 times better. You must be an expert. In what it is saying here, they were, they were experts, Daniel. People don't, um, experts don't um, make applications generally. Uh, people come and find the expert. Amen, amen. I, I'm talking to you seriously, you know. I'm not, I'm not making fun. Truly. I'm, not, I'm not joking. You must be an expert in whatever you do. Experts are sought after. Uh, it, it means that you have to dedicate yourself to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. you, you're not doing it because of, jo of a job. <coughs> you're doing it because you love what you're doing. If you love what you're doing, nothing will stop you to make yourself become an expert. Uh, you're not doing it for money. Uh, money, money come and money will go. You, you, you have a mission. You're on a mission. I, I'm, am I sort of getting there? Yes, yes. I need your feedback. You must be an expert. An expert, and it comes from, anyone heard about Booker T. Washington? Mm -hmm. Yes, a great educator, you know, black <coughs> educator. He came out of, out of slavery. And um, he wanted to be educated. Pardon me. He wanted to be educated, and he went to the school, uh, tried to engage with the um, head teacher, and she wouldn't take any notice of him. And eventually, she gave him a room to clean. And he cleaned that room so well that when she came and to test to see what is done. Uh, she couldn't find a spot. Mm. Whatever you do, become an expert. Mm. At that point in time, he was an expert cleaner. Mm. And he, 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 he was given a place. But he went beyond that. He became a great educator. Mm. And he himself made a statement that people may not like how you look. That's right. And so forth. But if you have something that they need, they'll come to you. That's right. Yeah, so be an expert. Are, are you going to do it? <laughs> yes. I hope, I hope you will. Are you going to try to be an expert? Yes. Young people, you're going to try to be an expert in whatever you do. Be an expert. Be an expert. And, and God will be honored. Like Daniel and his friends. They were honored, not because they're doing it for self-praise, but they were on a mission. And so I move on because I don't want to be too long here. Uh, and uh, you start to say, Brother well, Davis, we want to have you back again. <laughs> yeah, so back to belonging. Um, I said, you, you have to create. You have to be, make yourself become a person that belongs. And um, I think, biblically, I, I've shown you that already. Mm -hmm. But even academically, many of you may have heard of, about um, Abraham Maslow. Anyone? His theory on, uh, of motivation, motivational needs. And you start with a, a physiological needs. That's the body, food, and so forth. 
We need safety. We need belonging and love need. We need to be loved. We need to belong. We need uh, esteem to be, to be recognized, in other words. Cognitively needs to, to develop our intellect, in other words. So all these writers, you know, they're writing now, but it's been in the Bible. Uh, God said we must, I, I told you already, we, we must grow intellectually and, uh, and not, not, not shy away from that. That That's just, uh, I hear some people say, oh, I've got my BA, I'm born again. That's good. <laughs> yeah. It's more than that. It's more than that. You must stretch your intellect that God has given you. And, and God will be honored. And, and I pray to God for life. Um, I, I have to do, I'm, I'm 74. I have to pray to God for life. Um, but I don't want life just to put my feet up and you know, have a good time watching the television. I want to be able to do something. You must have a mission in life. Mm. So to belong back to, it's over to you. To belong, you have to be the catalyst. And I'm going to show you what happened with the Samaritan in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a while here. So um, we can soar like, like, like the eagle. You know, eagles, you, you heard, you know the story. Eagles are very strong and they can, they can, they can uh, navigate the wind and so forth. Uh, and but education, I'm using that to say, education provides the wings for soaring. If you want to go high in your career, in your profession, and spiritually grow too, you, you, to soar, to, to, sorry, to, to um, uh, soaring like the eagle requires education. Education provides the wings. Yes? Are you with me? Uh, for soaring. Yeah, in, in, in our world today. I move on. So now, the uh, centerpiece of what I want to say, the story of the Good Samaritan, uh, which has been read to you. Let me just turn back to you. That's Luke chapter 10. And I hope, I hope um, when I leave here, you will, you will see the need to change. Uh, again, I'm a teacher. If you're a teacher, you want your students to change, don't you? to grow and to, to, uh, to develop. I, I want you to change. I'm, ed I'm, I'm educating myself too. I'm always learning. Uh, because this story uh, about the Samaritan, I, I, had to, I, I had to discover it myself. I'm learning. Uh, it's Luke chapter 10. So we know the, how it started. Um, this, uh, this um, it says here, a certain lawyer he tested Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he, he asked Jesus, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? A big question. Mm -hmm. Big question. Big time question. And Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? it? So he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all. Keep that word. All. All your heart. With all your soul all your strength, all your mind, and then your neighbor as yourself. That word, all, tells me, and I hope it tells you, that you have to develop all your capacities, whether it be mind, soul, spirit, uh, and your physical being. All, not a quarter, a 50%, all. And that's where education comes in. We have to educate ourselves. Back to what I said, read, read, read. First, the Bible. The Bible here uh, gives you answers to all questions. But you still have to read, not just the Bible. You have to read. Uh, uh, the, so I said, the, an overview of this story is that um, there is the matter of compassion. Um, we read that part already. Um, it's not by impulse. I don't want to go over that because of time. We, it was read to you, the story of the Samaritan. So he, he told us the story of the Samaritan mm -hmm. to illustrate the, the question as to who your neighbor is, mm -hmm. yes? And the general feeling is that 
this man, the Samaritan stumbled on this man on the Jericho Road by accident. That's the kind of feeling. And he stumbled, he saw it, he saw it. The priest went by, the Levi went by. But this man, this man with a good heart, stopped. But it's, there's more to it than that. More to it than that. It contains a profound lesson for Christians today, for us today. It was not an accident. It was not an accident. And um, I move on to bring out some of the points to illustrate why it's not, not an accident. Um, again, remember, Samaritan was not a person that was part of the group, but he was adequately uh, prepared for this journey. If you look at this story, he had compassion. Mm -hmm. That's where we start, first of all. He had compassion. The... Um, the, the priests and the Levite, they went by. Did they not? They did not. But he had, he stopped the Samaritan because he had a heart of compassion. And I say to us that we can't do anything good in life if we haven't got compassion. We can't um, change the world if we haven't got compassion. We can change the world. When I say the world, we can change the community. And back to the, your song you know, this morning. We can change the world. Let your light so shine. So he had compassion. Today I say to you, we all need to have compassion. Jesus had compassion for us. So likewise, we must have compassion for others. And I, 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 I refer you to Micah 6, verse 8. Mm -hmm. What is required of the old man is to do justly, mm -hmm. to, be on the, uh, to be a champion of justice, mm -hmm. to love mercy, the heart of compassion, mm -hmm. and to walk humbly, not pompous, to walk humbly with your God. So he had uh, a heart of compassion. But as we looked at the story, uh, which was, it was read to you. He had a medical kit. He had a medical kit with him. He had wine. That's the kind of disinfectant. Yes, true. Uh, it's, it's got spirit in it. He, he had that with him. He had uh, oil that was to soothe the wound. He had bandages. <laughs> yeah. He had an equipment. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me that this man was just by accident. <laughs> it was part of his mission. Mm -hmm. And I, I dare say that the, the, um, the, the folks, the bad folks on the Jericho Road, they know about him, you know. They knew about him because he was there ministering to, to those that have been hurt. He was there looking after them. And uh, they did not, somehow they didn't attack him. Uh, when, uh, when you're with God, you're protected. Amen. So he, he was on a mission. He had, he had these things with him. And so when he picked up this man, uh, and he took, him, took the man to the inn, and he looked after the, the man, as the story says. Uh, uh, and you, we, we read that already. And at the next, the next day, he said, I will give you some money. And when I come, if you, if you need more, I will bring it to you. He had a mission. Have you got a mission today? Mm. If we are different, but we must have a mission in life. You must have a mission in life. If not, you drift on, this, on, on, on the sea without a sail and without direction. So, as I said before, be an expert. But be an expert is not just like that. You just be an expert and that's it. Expert because you're going to be on a mission. A mission. Like the, like the, 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 the Good Samaritan here. He was not af afraid of that uh, dangerous road. 
That was his mission. Remember, he was excluded, but he became included because he was on a mission. His mission. And so I say to us, we must be like the Good Samaritan. We're not called to uh, there by accident. What we do must be intentional. Are you with me? It must be intentional. It must be part of our makeup. We must be decide that this is what I want to do. And again, I say to you, to, to, to you young people, um, don't just strive to make money and to have a house and so forth. It will not bring you true happiness. True happiness comes from serving. Amen. Serving. Amen. Uh, if, you, uh, if you serve, and it's part of Maslow's thing, he, he calls it self-actualization, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the pinnacle of the, of the money. I see you know it very well. <laughs> uh, when you reach that, you, it's about being, uh, not being on a mission. You, 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 you being, ha having a life that is fulfilled. Not a life that is, um, you know, drifting. If you want fulfillment in life, you've got to be on a mission. Am I making sense to you? Yes. Have I changing your think mm -hmm. thinking? Mm -hmm. uh, right. <laughs> I hope you're coming back here for me to have an examination of. <laughs> <laughs> so, see how you got, how you're getting on. But I, I'm not. Uh, despite that, I'm, I'm very serious about it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm speaking from the heart. That I believe uh, we must be on a mission to uh, and have a life of purpose that makes us happy. Not money, young people. Not uh, a fast car, and uh, and those who might be in politics. Not power. It doesn't make you happy. What makes us happy is to be called to serve. Amen. To serve others who are in need. The world today is becoming even more, uh, more divided in terms of those who have and those who haven't got. Uh, inequality is, is growing in our world today. But we can't just sit and, be, and live in despair to say it's none of, it's none of my business. Mm. We must, in our own little corner, shine for Jesus. We must shine for Jesus. Amen. We must shine for Jesus. And I move on, yes. So what lessons can we learn from this? Some of the conditions for serving and caring. I'm kind of summarizing this part here. Have a heart of compassion. Amen. And that don't come, you know, you have to be close to God. You don't get that. Uh, if, if that was the case, we wouldn't have so much problem in the world. People turn away from God. And therefore, they're not compassionate. They don't. They, they don't think of others. And uh, you know, if I was, um, if I if I ever should meet um, um, the, the Home Secretary, uh, uh, the previous one, <laughs> uh, 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 I, I would I would I would have to talk to her about um, what the Bible says that when I was a stranger, did you take me in, That's right. or did you send me to Rwanda? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it, it's serious. Uh, uh, there's place. It's not a problem that it, it, you can't have. You can't take people in. The, the the planet Earth belongs to God. Amen. Belongs to God. So um, have a heart of compassion. Uh, hearing must be a way of life. Number two, it must be intentional. So it's not something that, you know, a, a feeling you catch. It's intentional. It's, it's practice. You, don't, you have to practice these things. Part, it, make it part of your life. It must be intelligent, or we must be intelligent about serving and caring. Not a hit and miss business. We must be intelligent about it. Serving involve, involves collaboration. And in, in the story, who was the Samaritan collaborating with? Anyone can tell me? The innkeeper. 
He was collaborating. He was, he was not on his own. And I'm saying you can't do things on your own. You need somebody to, to also help you. Mm. So he was in collaboration with the uh, innkeeper. So serving involves collaborating with others. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. And that's why we have church. We are working together. And uh, we must devote time to serving. We can't say we're going to serve and we don't do put time to it. This man, he probably had another job. I, I reckon he was a doctor too. Um, but he, you know, he, he wasn't just working in the hospital. He, he, he made time to, to uh, be on that Jericho Road. He made time. And we have to make time uh, to serve. That's the kind of lesson I think we can draw from that. So I hope we, be, we, will learn, we are learning something here today. I, I truly hope, hope so. And I, I've learned it myself. It didn't just come like that. It's a song I, I, haven't got, I should have brought that hymn, but the new, the, the, the new Advent hymn now is a song we are sharing in the Georgia service. Master, I would be. You, anyone know that, know that song? Um, yeah, I wish I had brought it here. But it's saving and sharing. We share in service. And we surrender to Jesus in sharing his serv in service. So I come into a close here now. Um, the story of the Samaritan is a picture of Jesus himself. Amen. Mm -hmm. And see the ages, page, pages 441 and 442. I think I have something on that here. Yes. Uh, it says, in the story of this good Samaritan, Jesus gave a picture of himself and his mission. Man has been deceived, bruised, robbed, and ruined by Satan. That's the Jericho Road. That story is about us being battered and bruised by, by the enemy, the devil, robbed by Satan and left to perish. But the Savior had compassion on our helpless condition. He left his glory to come to our rescue like the Samaritan. The, the priest and the Levi passed by. But Jesus came. Came. This story is about Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. When he was telling that story, he was talking about himself. Amen. He didn't mark it out as such. We have to dig deep to find that out. And uh, Ellen White uh, wrote about it too, as I just read to you here. It's about Jesus. Man has been deceived, bruised, robbed, ruined by Satan, and left to perish. But Jesus had compassion on our helpless condition. He came to rescue us. Unless there is practical self-sacrifice, we cannot, we are not Christian. We have to make sacrifices. But the good news is this, when you make a sacrifice, God will bless you. Always will bless you. Every time. He will bless you. You need not fear. Blessing will come down in showers on you. Believe, believe it. He will bless you. Our interest must be to be like Jesus. Amen. That is to serve humanity. So the story, just to emphasize, is not so much about the Samaritan. It's about God himself. Amen. Because Jesus is God. Yes. He came down to save his people. He came to save his people. And so I say in conclusion, the Samaritan was not shaped by the general expectation of society or the narrative of the day. He was meant to be an old cast. Uh, they looked down on him. But the Samaritan was not shaped by that expectation. Mm -hmm. 
Don't let anybody shape you. Don't let society or friends or whatever it is shape you. Jesus is the one that should shape you. Secondly, in conclusion, he respected human life. That is the Samaritan. So are we today. To, we, we are called upon to respect human life. And when you, when you watch and see what's happening today, with you know, children being killed and all that, uh, I, can't, I can't think that it's respecting human life. Because you have to defend yourself. It says we must respect human life. Number three, he was obedient to the commandment to love God, number one, and to love his, his, his neighbor. It's, it's in the law, love God and, and love your fellow men. Uh, so you, we have to be obedient. We have to be obedient, not uh, just to keep Sabbath and so forth. The, the first part of the commandment, people, we tend to be better on that. But when it comes to the second part, to deal with your neighbor, we, we fall down on that. Yeah. Yes. The Samaritan, number four, was not just a do-gooder, a good novice, but he was educated to serve. It was, he was not a, just a little do-gooder on the side here. And people think, oh, he's a bit silly. Uh, his, his head is need, need straightening out. He wanted to give all his money away and so forth. No, uh, the Samaritan was educated to serve. And he, I'm challenging you today. Uh, it doesn't matter how old, old you are. It, I'm not talking about going to university. We can educate ourselves to serve. Yes? And finally, do not ignore the warning to be found in the parable of the sheep and the goats. Matthew chapter 25. I, I read, we read that and then, then I'll finish. Matthew chapter 25. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory and all the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate them one from another as a sheep, as, as a sheep, as a shepherd, sorry, divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, that's the sheep, come you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. That's the message for the politician. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and, and so forth? When did you? Then when did we see your stranger and, and take you in? And he said, "Assuredly, I've just skipped a little bit here. I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you've done it to me. You've done it to me. So, do not ignore that warning to serve." and to minister to those in need. I hope um, you've found something mm -hmm. in it. I hope if I come back, I take an examination <laughs> like, 
Uh, don't let it go through one ear and the other. Talk to your children. Read to them. Teach them. Practice it. Be an expert. Serve. Be on a mission. And God will bless you. What can we say? Amen. 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 I want to thank Dr. Heath. Thank you so much. And take your love back to Holloway Church for us. Yes, and come and join the choir. <laughs> <laughs> we will now stand as we sing our closing hymn, after which Elder will give us a closing prayer. Our closing hymn is hymn number 537, He Leadeth Me. Oh.
of you as the good Samaritan. Amen. Lord, help us to follow and not to ignore your message to us. <coughs> Lord, change us so that we can be of service to you. Yes. Questions are asked eternal, about eternal life and we know the answer. We got to love you and to love our fellow men. Lord, I pray, I humbly pray that all of us, starting with myself, will be obedient to your command so that we will all have a place in your glorious kingdom. Bless this congregation, I pray. pray. In the name of Jesus, I ask. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you for being with us today. We have no afternoon program this afternoon, but we will, if we go home today, let us read a book with our family. Amen. 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 <laughs> next week, we'll be having Bible studies, so lunch will be provided next week. The platform party will leave, and then you'll be ushered out. Enjoy the rest of the day, and may God go with you, and the Holy Spirit guide you through this week.